Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Thursday. What day is Thursday? Super Ryan. Trivia. <laughs> now, it's Trivia Thursday. Tell everybody what we do on Trivia Thursday. They may be tuning in. They're all new. They have no clue what these two fellas are yeah. who wear the same but different clothes every, every day because we have seven shirts. That's right. Um, tell them what Trivia Thursday is all about. Well, it's uh, you ask me some questions mm-hmm. if I get them all right. Somebody um, from the Wheel of Trivia, mm-hmm. which is our Instagram followers, yep. will win a prize. And I, it's so popular yeah. that I'm getting people DMing <laughs> me. Right. We learned that yesterday. Yeah. Telling me I, I want my name on the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, I'll put your name on the wheel. Nice. So so I'm going to go on in and I'm going to put somebody's name on the wheel. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this day because there's something crazy that's going to happen. Oh, I'm and, excited. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going to be mind-blowing. So I had a Joshua Watson. Do you know Josh? I do. Uh, may know him. He mm-hmm. he shot and he said, dude, I got to get on the wheel of trivia. What <laughs> yeah. do I need to do yeah. to get on the wheel of trivia? And then not only that, listen to that. Not only that, um, somebody else called and said, hey, I'm not even on the wheel of trivia. Oh. His name was a friend of mine from Tennessee named Louie. Mm. And so I'm like, have I'm like, dude, Louie, you're on. Yeah. So Louie, you're now on. Josh, you're now on. You nice. want to be on the wheel of trivia, hit us up. Yeah. What will we do for them? We'll give you, you'll have an opportunity to potentially win a prize if I get all the answers right. We will put you on the wheel of trivia. Now, here's the problem with the wheel of trivia and trivia in general. People whine. (laughs) Our followers are some of the biggest whiners on the planet. They don't like how we dress. We should should change clothes, although we do. I have a lot. A lot of Black Rifle t-shirts, same one. Number two, I'm unfair. I give too hard of questions. Mm -hmm. I give too many questions. Yeah. Ten, which every test I've taken has been more than (laughs) ten. But our our whiny followers say, I'm too hard on you. I trick you. One one of our followers called me a trickster. Yeah. And so it it, it gets ugly. It should be a (laughs) fun day, right? It should be a joyful, fun moment. And Thursdays for me are just turning into anxiety. (laughs) It's like, you're going to flunk. They're going to be mad at me. Nobody's happy. Nobody ever wins. Yeah. And so I'm changing it, all right? So now, the first thing first, the prize today, mind-blowing. I can't wait. Never done it before. Yeah. Tell the little people about what this logo is. Yeah, it's a 2981 Coffee mm-hmm. Company, mm-hmm. and uh, that is the coffee company that you had envisioned mm-hmm. to happen here at Believer's Church. At Believer's Church, and we're roasting our own beans. Yeah. We're going to be getting our bags in soon. Yeah. But here, here's my prize. What What is this right here, man? Free coffee for life. For life. Dang. For life. I hope an old person wins so it won't be that long. <laughs> <laughs> free, free coffee for life. Now, yeah. here's the problem. The, the problem is you're going to have to go here. Yeah. But if you win and we pick your name and you you go here. Right. Or anytime we're open. Right. You come by, all you, we're going to give them a little token yeah. that says they get free coffee for life. Yeah. They just simply walk in the cafe, show the token. Is it like a John Wick token? No. It's like the vaccine card. Oh, nice. You know the vaccine thing you get to get on an airplane? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're giving those out here. Except it's a coffee scene. Nice. You just download it. Boom. It's on your phone. You show it. You drink all you want. Yeah. It's like you got your vaccine through the Cap- Bible. Cappuccino, free. Nice. Espresso, free. Whoa. Mochaccino, uh, free. <laughs> it's all free if they win. Nice. Let's see who's going to win. All right, let's see. I, I don't feel like you're as excited about that I'm as I excited. am. Now, if they lose, okay, you don't get them. Right. Uh, I'm going to give away, which is close to free coffee for life. Yeah. My book, Fireflies on the Bedpost. Nice. It's a 1699 value right. on sale now on Amazon for 11.99. Wow. So it's a 12 buck value. Yeah. Signed by me probably nice. takes it up to how much? Worth how much? At least $14. $14 at right. least. Right. So they're going to sign copy if they lose. We'll mm-hmm. give that away to somebody. We'll mm-hmm. mail it to them or something. We'll figure it out. Let's It'll see help who's... them deal with their emotions on me losing. Yes. Yeah, so let's just see who's going to win. We've added two new people today, nice. Louie and Josh. Hope you guys maybe get lucky today. Yeah. Let's see who's going to win today. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> we gave away a free guitar last week. That's man. awesome. Where, who else is giving away guitars? Us. Nobody. Come on. Who is it? Who is it? 
Oh, oh man. <laughs> Louie! Did Louie? <laughs> Louie! Just so they know we don't cheat. Congratulations. Right. Louie just signed up. We'll tag him, as yeah. we always do. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, he'll be on the IG. Yeah. And he watches us. So, free coffee for Louie. He lives in Tennessee, so he'll have to drive here. Yeah. But if he drives here, free coffee for him. For life. I almost think if he would come here, I might give him a guitar. He might move here. He yeah. might move here because of this. Yeah. Free coffee for life. You know what the topic is. You want to know what the topic is? Yes, I do. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Dude, if you flunk this, <laughs> I want you to call every person that's ever criticized me, and, and you you tell them they have to forgive me. Okay. If you flunk a yeah. quiz about Jesus, I'm done. I'm shutting down the Bible reading project. I need you to get it right. It's a lot of pressure. And what I have done, I have, I have shortened 10 mm-hmm. questions down to the perfected number of God's seven. <laughs> seven days of creation. Yeah. Seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Seven letters to the churches at Revelation. Right. Seven candles on the candlestick. Seven yeah. stars in his hand. Mm-hmm. Come on, Jesus. Seven days of the week. Yeah. Seven questions yeah. about Jesus. Are you ready? I, I there, don't know. This is a lot of pressure. There are no just so Sam, who is the guy that <laughs> yeah. basically thinks I'm a trickster. Yeah. I want to be very clear. The first question is real. There <laughs> there is no there is no test questions. Yeah. When you see this pop up, mm-hmm. that is the first question. Yeah. You have seven. Right. You miss one. Nobody's getting free coffee for life. Louie's never coming here. Dang. Louie probably never talked to us again. All right, let me But I believe okay, go ahead. Pressure. Go for it. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Question number one. Yeah. Who ordered the census which brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem? Uh, Luke chapter two. Yeah. And in those days there went out a decree from uh Jesus isn't even born yet. <laughs> I hadn't even got into the life of Jesus. I'm just getting to his birth. Right. Just his birth. We, we're right yeah. at his birth. Just yeah. the name of this guy. Yeah. This happens every single Christmas. Yeah. We read this story every Christmas. Mm-hmm. Almost every family reads the story mm-hmm. every Christmas. I read this story every Christmas. The church here reads this story every Christmas. Right. You've been with us four or five years, so mm-hmm. you've heard it that many times, minimum. Yeah. yeah. Who ordered um, it? The king. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, you're it's, gonna lose on number one. No, I'm not. I know it. I know it's uh, mm-hmm. uh the king. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Give me just one moment. Okay, let's come back to it then. All right, I'll give you a chance. If you say it's on the tip of your tongue, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a chance to come back to it. Let's try the next question. All right. So one's in the bag. You may lose. Yeah. We're going to keep it there just to see how well you do. Okay. How many days did it take Mary and Joseph before they found Jesus in the temple? You remember the story? He ran off. Mm-hmm. He's like, see you later. Right. I got something to do. Yeah. And he goes and hangs out in the temple where his father's business is. Mm-hmm. He's lost yeah. for several days. Mm-hmm. It took mom and pop how long to find 12-year-old Jesus? I think it was four days. Four days? Mm-hmm. Final answer? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're wrong. It was three days. <laughs> so we didn't get but two two <laughs> questions about Jesus. You flunked, but well, you still you've missed one. You, yeah. you let's just keep going because right. I really want to see if you just know about Jesus. Do you know who Jesus is? He's the Son of the Living God. He is the topic of the entire Bible. Here's your next question. All right. In what city did Jesus turn water into wine? <laughs> uh. Uh, do you read your Bible? Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, what city did Jesus turn water into wine? Capernaum. Cana of Galilee. Good try. How Fair about up. this one? It's okay. We, we, we're, we're, we're understanding who you are now. In Jesus' ministry, how many people did he raise from the dead? Uh, Three. Very good. Three people. Do you know who they are just off the cuff? Lazarus. Yep. The little girl. Uh-huh. I don't know the third one. J. Iris's daughter. Okay. All right. Next one. How long was Lazarus dead before being resurrected by Jesus? Four days. You sure? Yeah. Not three? That's four. Very good. Four. 
Dude, knuckle it up. You may have had stress, anxiety. Yeah, I think that's right. I think you you even said I feel tense. Yeah. Maybe why you don't know basic truths about well, you Jesus. You said you were going to shut the whole thing down. I am. So <laughs> uh, this is a good one. Where did Mary and Joseph take Jesus after his birth in Bethlehem? They went somewhere. Uh, Egypt. Egypt. Very good, man. We must be in the gospel you read. <laughs> In whose tomb was Jesus buried? Um, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Of? Uh, I don't know. Joseph of, I don't know. Yeah. Joseph of Arimathea. I'll give you that one. Yeah. Uh, that one's good. But you fl- you flunked. Yeah. You missed three of seven. Mm. Uh, I tried my best to help our viewers <laughs> to make it less questions, right. to make it simple with no tricksters. To talk about Jesus, <laughs> who I think even the devil himself would know much about him. Yeah, he does. But I wanted to give you opportunity. So, yeah. right now, publicly, is there anything about this test, you this quiz, you felt was unfair? Did you feel like the questions were too hard? Such as this question that we read every Easter. <laughs> it, was that was that question just too hard? No, it was just a little nuancy and nuancy. I don't think it was. Uh, not a Jesus That's question. Part of a Caesar Augustus question. Okay, well, well, either way, it 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 was just about Jesus' story. I figured any Christian would read this story every. I want to tell you why I got him because people are banging on me, right? Right. I picked this one because everybody reads a Christmas story, yeah, including yeah. you. Obviously, yeah. you didn't. No, you missed this one. You said four, yeah, but it was three. That's close, and and that's okay. That's close. I'll yeah. give you that. You were kind of uh, four, three, three, mm-hmm. four. How long did they really look for him? Um, so, you know, and then Cana Galilee. You missed. I thought everybody knew Jesus's first miracle. You have to know this to get into Bible school. <laughs> so, did you go to Bible school? Not a real one. It was Not a, a real one. one. All right. Yeah. So that's probably why you didn't know that. The rest yeah. of them, you did well. Yeah. So I'm going. What I'm doing every week is I'm just going to do Jesus trivia. All right. <laughs> so you'll know for a while. So people don't think I trick you and I'm rude and mean. <laughs> it's just Jesus trivia. Jesus is the theme of the Bible. Yeah. I'll ask you questions about Jesus every week. I genuinely want someone to win. Louis did not win. Sorry, Louis. Lou, go ahead and apologize to him. I'm very sorry. He forgives you. I know him as a good dude. I would send him the book, but guess what? He already has it. Already has a copy of my book, so nobody wins. Dang. And so that's okay. But it's Thursday. What chapter are we reading here? Let's get some excitement back in the air right. <laughs> and read the Bible together. What chapter you got today? Psalm 64. Read it up. All right. Oh, God, listen to my complaint. Protect my life from my enemies' threats. Hide me from the plots of this evil mob. From this gang of wrongdoers, they sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their bitter words like arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent, attacking suddenly and fearlessly. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice, they ask. They will, as they plot their crimes, they say, we have devised the perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning. But God himself will shoot them with his arrows, suddenly striking them down. Their own tongues will ruin them, and all will see them, all who see them will shake their heads in, in scorn. Then everyone will be afraid. They will proclaim their mighty acts of God and realize all the amazing things he does. The godly will rejoice in the Lord and find shelter in him, and those who do what is right We'll praise him. Verse 7, always a challenging verse. But God himself will shoot them with his arrows, suddenly striking them down. Mm-hmm. You didn't think that's, I mean, that's just weird. Yeah. Like David assumes that God is going to take a bow and arrow mm-hmm. and shoot them. Who's been shooting them? Do you even think that's plausible? What mm-hmm. do you think he means? Is this just something he's wishful? Mm-hmm. That he's actually saying, hey, man, God's going to shoot you all with his arrows. Mm-hmm. You're shooting at me. He's going to shoot at you, kill you. And yet, in all my years of living, I've never seen God shoot an arrow at somebody. Right, right. So what do you think? I think that it means um, well, what Jesus said is that I think that everything that's in darkness will one day come to light. That, okay. That I think that's the arrow is that, that 
what you're doing and crafting in darkness, you're crafting your traps and setting them out in secret. Mm-hmm. I think one day it's going to come to light and the people are going to see who you truly are. That's good. Listen to verse, uh, verse three. Again, this is what I've landed on, and I think it goes right to that as well. It says, they, which is his enemies, sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their bitter words. Mm -hmm. Like a what? Arrow. Yeah. I think it's words that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I think he says, man, they aim their words at me like an arrow. God's going to aim his arrow at them like words. And it even says in verse 8, their words ruin them. Right. And I think if we could ever understand the power of words, Mm -hmm. our words are like an arrow. I used to hear a friend of mine say, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words, you know, never hurt me. Yeah. But he said, sticks and stones will break your bones, words will kill you. Yeah. There's people today committed suicide because some somebody said something to right. them. A father, a mother, a friend, a loved yeah. one hurt their feelings. Words are truly like uh, an arrow. It's like a, um, you know, a mechanism to take life. Right. And even the Bible says words have the power of life and death. So I think when he says, man, their words are like arrows shooting at me, but I'm going to pray God shoots his arrows at them. Why? Because I'm going to see that their own words ruin them. That's good. And one thing I've known in my walk with God over the years walking with Jesus is there's nothing greater than understanding the power of your words. Mm-hmm. How many people curse their life, their friends, their relationships, their marriages just with their tongue? just with the words of their mouth, man. They can't bridle their mouth, speak death over themselves all the time. And I think once you understand that your words are like an arrow, man, warfare, right? We talk about spiritual warfare, right? I mean, what is that? It's your words. right? And and then not only just your words, but God's words are like an arrow. He says they're like a sword that'll cut you. Hebrews 4, they'll cut you in and out, you know? And I think once we understand the power of words, the words that we speak, even of our own self as a created human being, but when we line our mouth up with God's word, yeah. it becomes a weapon, uh, a weapon to do war right. against our enemy, to speak life over ourselves. And I know that sounds crazy, right? There's a whole generation, oh, let's name it, claim it, yeah, you know. Right. But what we did with that is we took the power away from what God gave us in our DNA is that our words have life. That's right. And our words have power. Dude, thank you so much. Thank Thank you you for trying to win. Thank you to Louie for hanging in with us. Thank you, Louie. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow.